Hello and welcome back to another Aquatic Invasive Species Spotlight. Today we're going to be focusing on Curly Leaf Pondweed, which is another widespread submerged aquatic invasive plant that threatens native plant and animal biodiversity. While there are dozens of native plants in the same family as Curly Leaf Pondweed, it is currently the only invasive pondweed we have in the U.S. and is easily distinguishable from the native pondweed. So curly leaf pondweed is native to Europe, Asia, Africa, and Australia. It's another one of our earliest invaders. This plant was first reported in New York in 1879. However, the mechanisms for introduction are somewhat unclear. Curly leaf pondweed may have been intentionally planted as waterfowl habitat and then escaped or accidentally transported with fish imported for hatchery stocking. This species is currently distributed throughout the United States and is listed as a tier four or widespread species in the lower Hudson prism. Curly leaf pondweed can be found in both estuarine and freshwater lakes, ponds, reservoirs, rivers, or streams up to 23 feet deep. It can tolerate low light and low temperatures and as such thrives in polluted turbid waters as well as colder waters, allowing it to outcompete native plants that cannot withstand such conditions. The ability to survive colder temperatures contributes to its competitive edge as demonstrated by its unique phenology. This plant actually appears in early spring and dies back in mid-July. However, curly leaf pondweed can survive throughout the winter in its overwintering form, and then begins rapid early spring growth from anywhere from eight to 10 centimeters per day, once the waters reach around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's able to colonize the water column far sooner than native plants. Still, there may be some benefits of curly leaf pondweed. It's been suggested that in those polluted waters where native plants cannot survive, this plant may actually provide habitat and food for waterfowl and wildlife. It's also been shown to have antimicrobial properties against bacteria like E. coli, as well as remove contaminants from the water. Similarly to most other aquatic invaders, this plant spreads primarily through fragmentation, but it also uh, produces turions. And turions are overwintering buds, which allow for that winter growth of the plant. Up to 150 of these buds can break off a single plant during that midsummer dieback. And then during the fall, curly leaf actually starts growing in a diminished form until the warmer waters allow for that early spring growth. These turions are consumed by waterfowl, contributing to one form of spread, but the plant is also spread by attaching to boats and through normal dispersal by currents. Of course, that early spring growth has severe implications for the survival of native plants, out competing them for space and light. But the dense monocultures of curly leaf pondweed can also impede the flow of water, creating stagnant conditions. This plant also holds a lot of phosphorus, which is then released during the summer dieback and contributes to algal blooms. And consequently, upon decomposition of those algal blooms, low dissolved oxygen. So the stem of curly leaf pondweed can grow up to about 15 feet. It has rigid, narrow, oblong leaves with uh, wavy or and uh, serrated margins. Some people say it looks like a lasagna noodle or bacon. It also has a really prominent mid vein, which is another characteristic of all uh, species in the Potomogeton family. The leaves are alternate along the stem and dense towards the end of the stem, forming a sort of um, bushy appearance towards the end. The leaves are typically semi-translucent and reddish green. We don't often like to use color when talking about aquatic plants due to changes in water quality, but this is pretty common for this plant to have these reddish green leaves. It does not have floating leaves like other pond weeds, but it does have a small floral spike, although you most likely won't need to use this to identify the plant. It does have a very small spike that sticks up above the water. And then, of course, it has those turions, which we've shown previously. So that's going to be it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure and check out more of our Species Spotlight videos.